All right, so let's, uh, let's begin at the beginning. The question is, where does the archaeological level begin? That's what that word, uh, kind of hard to see it on the, on the screen there, but um, this is the $64,000 question. Um, when you're, if you were going to take a course, if you were going to teach a course in Old Testament archaeology, where do you even begin in the archaeological record? Uh, where, or where does the archaeological record actually begin? Uh, this is a very important question. It may seem like sort of a benign question, but it's really a fundamental question because it hinges upon certain assumptions, uh, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Um, but where does the archaeological level begin? Uh, and let me, before we get to uh, the next step we're going we're gonna to take, uh, let me say what archaeology is. Let me, let me clarify what, what archaeology is in distinction with history. Uh, history studies the past by looking at written records. So we're talking about papyrus manuscripts, we're talking about clay tablets, anything that is, um, anything that has writing on it. So history, historians reconstruct the past primarily by looking at historical text, whereas an archaeologist is a historian, but we, we study the past by looking at artifacts. So it's not to say that, that archaeologists are not interested in historical inscriptions, it's just that, uh, technically speaking, to be really technical, archaeology studies the past by looking at artifacts that humans have left behind. And the other thing, uh, as before we begin too, and I don't have a slide for this, is this, and that is, what is history? That's a, that's a really foundational question. Uh, let me just start with the word itself. The word history comes from the Greek word historia, uh, which was, I don't know if it's coined by him, but certainly first used by him. Uh, the Greek writer Herodotus, who wrote a book called The Histories. And the word history in the Greek literally means investigation. It doesn't mean myth. It doesn't mean story. It doesn't mean anything else. It means investigation. So, um, but when it comes to uh, scholarship, how do today modern scholars, how do your professors look at history? And that is the, that was where the historical record begins. And uh, what artifacts do we, now I'm not asking about the Bible, but I'm asking what actual physical artifacts do we have of historical writing? So when I talk about primeval history, what I'm talking about is the time before we actually have physical writing. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about there? Does that make sense? So primeval history would be, if we were going to overlay that over in the first chapters of Genesis, that would be the creation all the way to the flood, and even after the flood, possibly a little bit of time after the flood. Now, here's the question. Here's the big question that is sort of, we're going to take us to the next level, and that is this. Was there a flood? Because depending on how you answer this question will then determine where you see the archaeological record begin. Because if the flood was local, if it was a localized flood in Mesopotamia, then the archaeological record um, is going to be a result of slow, gradualistic uh, human evolutionary changes that uh, humans basically evolved from uh, simple-celled creatures all the way through the, the uh, higher primates and then eventually developed into advanced civilizations through Homo sapiens sapiens. But if there was a global flood that destroyed everything on the face of the earth, then where the archaeological record begins takes on a different color, if that makes sense. So um, I'm, let me just say at the outset here what I'm going to be talking about tonight and what I'm going to defend tonight. Uh, and, and then I'm also going to sort of make some clarifications about my view because I don't want you to misunderstand where I'm coming from. Um, I personally hold to a global catastrophic flood, but I'm not necessarily a young earth creationist as they define themselves. Now, as probably typical scholarship would define me, I, they would consider me a younger creationist. Although, here's the thing, I'm just not dogmatic about the age of the earth. I'm not going to plant my flag in the age of the earth or in any kind of uh, dates. And when you get back in this far, and here's the thing, 
this is not a question of archaeology now. We're, we're archaeology, again, as I've defined it, is a study of artifacts. When you're talking about the flood, that's not artifacts. That's a geological event. That's a, something that you have to use the uh, principles of geology uh, to try to ascertain if there was a global flood or not. So, um, so again, I'm not necessarily committed. I mean, it could be young. In fact, I do think it's younger than uh, most typical scholars, paleontologists and geologists say that it is, but I'm not dogmatic that it's like 4,000 or 6,000. Does that make sense? It could be older than that. But uh, to me, that is a question that we should bracket and set aside. And that's an important question. We shouldn't plant our flag in a gate. But that being said, I do think that what, what, what we're going to look at tonight, some of the evidence, does point to uh, evidence that the Earth is a lot younger than we might think it is. Now, it could be still millions of years old, but the flood is a fairly recent event in Earth's history, if that makes sense. So we're going to talk about that. So uh, not only that, we do have uh, when the historical record begins, as soon as humans begin to write, what do they record? They record accounts of a great flood. In fact, the earliest historical writings that we have, the memory is of a great flood, uh, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. So uh, there are local flood arguments and there are global flood arguments. Uh, all the arguments, let me just say, and we, we don't have time to talk about all of them tonight, uh, but let me just say that both views both local flood arguments as well as global flood arguments both have their problems. They have strengths and they have weaknesses. Uh, the weakness I would call an anomaly. These are, an, an anomaly would be uh, evidence or data that doesn't really fit into the model. Um, and, and so both views have strengths and weaknesses. I just think that uh, the global flood has the greater, uh, a greater evidence behind it in my view. Again, not committed to that it has to be 6,000 years old. It could be, 